This is a HeadGum Original. Thank you to Athletic Greens for sponsoring this episode of our show. Guys, you know I'm high on Athletic Greens because I've started taking it every day and it makes me feel energized, which I obviously need because I never sleep well. I've started taking it in the morning. I'll have a cup of water and then I'll have my Athletic Greens and then an hour later I'll have my coffee. And it just really helps me start the day feeling like I have a pep in my step uh, without tasting super healthy but being super healthy. Uh, So what is this stuff? Well, with one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all the things. Uh, It helps me again with my energy. Uh, I definitely feel like I'm a better version of myself physically. Uh, And the taste, again, I would say is kind of bubblegummy. I haven't found anyone that agrees with me on that, but that's what I taste. It's kind of like mild and tropical. And, uh, I, you know, I've started traveling a little bit and I take it with me on the go because they gave me travel packs. And again, we'll get to that later. Uh, Athletic Greens is lifestyle friendly. Whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free or gluten-free... Uh, It's all for you, and it's all right with AG1. It contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything while still tasting good. It supports, again, better sleep quality and recovery, mental clarity and alertness, and much, much more. And it's the one thing with the best things. Because Athletic Greens uses the best of the best products based on the latest science with constant product iterations and third-party testing. It costs less than $3 a day, and you're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. It's also cheaper than getting all these supplements yourself. I used to be a you know million different pills guy. Now I get it all from one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens. And you're investing again in an all-in-one nutritional insurance. So right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. Especially heading into cold and flu season, right? It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D, which is incredibly important, especially in places that don't get a lot of sun in the winter, and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash what's that. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash what's that to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Thanks, Athletic Greens. Are we rolling or yeah. it's just the zoom? Yeah. Can you hear? <laughs> what? Yeah. Welcome to another edition of the Adgum Podcast. Uh, Friday, February 25th, shortest month of the year. Uh, we're almost through it. Uh, shout out uh, to our lineup today, which is Johnny Villa, George Saba, Andrew Pyle, and Amir Blumenfeld. Um, what, how, how's it hanging with everybody? Uh, <laughs> Pilot, you're having technical issues. Johnny, you're at home. Johnny's laptop might might die in the middle of this, and George is currently in an editing bay uh, working on a television episode, so he cannot talk or hear us. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean he can't talk or hear us? So he's not he on has, the show. His, he can't be listening to things in the editing bay, and he can't be responding when he's next to his boss, right? So what's happening is that he can't hear us, and we are not going to hear him say anything. <laughs> So, why, why did you add him last minute? Because like, it's this, fun to have guests on you're a just show. Making this, you're making this harder for Grayson to edit in the end. <laughs> I'm not going to apologize for taking a big swing. <laughs> so he cannot hear us and he, and he cannot say anything. At no point during this record will George hear anything we're saying. But at the same time, he won't say anything. So I might as well leave. Major key alert. Swing for the fences, no matter the defenses. I've got three fucking white guys here telling me what to do, how to feel, what to eat, and when to be. Three? (laughs) What's that? (laughs) (laughs) Andrew Pyle, how is that cock, man? Yeah, you ask this every episode now. I just I don't think I need to stop. <laughs> what are you right. eating? You keep like quickly moving shit into your mouth with chopsticks. What that can't we can't see anything. I can't it's, see it. It's a bowl it's just of paper. paper. It looks like brownies. You're eating brownies with chopsticks is what it looks like from here. You're so 
dexterous with the chopsticks. What is, is that a hunk is that of steak? steak? It's just a piece steak. of steak, a giant piece of steak with chopsticks. Why chopsticks? Why on show? <laughs> why, why so close to the mic? <laughs> Here's a plan for today. Oh. oh, God. You guys want to hear it? Can you finish eating and then say it? Hang on. Just fucking bear with me. It's a wax episode. Ugh. So you didn't prepare anything is what you're trying to say. Couldn't. I had an audition right before this during the time I was going to outline the episode. George says, LOL, what are you guys talking about? What do you mean he says it? He didn't say anything. In the chat. You can't hear. In the fucking chat. <laughs> <laughs> How did the audition go? It went really well. This might be bison meat now that I'm tasting it. Who made that? Peter Luger. You went to no a steakhouse really? last night. You went to Peter Luger <laughs> and got a doggy bag. Um, my like entertainment industry mentor took me there last night. Sorry, start <laughs> from the way, way, way top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why did anybody take you under their wing and give you a, a bison? <laughs> entertainment mentor. <laughs> His name's Ivan. <laughs> Don't act okay. so flippant slash glib slash casual. What's that? Potatoes? Frites? Mm-hmm. Bingo. So you went Damn, there with him. Daniel! So loud. Yeah. Happy weekend. I don't know what else to say. Um, I'm having how, a great time. How was, was Peter Luger's? It's kind of a famous Seems steakhouse. Topic. Yeah, it's really fancy. Is it good? Famously bad. Yeah, is it like mm. overrated or is it like... It was unbelievable. As, yeah? I've never had steak. In a good way or... You've never had steak like that or you never had steak, period? Second one. So it was good. <laughs> Did you like the... Okay. What's that? Did I lick the plate? No, the plate is sizzling. Was that George? Yeah, I believe it was. So he interrupted the stream with a song. I'm starting to now think he might be in the studio (laughs) with a famous artist. No way. I doubt it. Who did you say you had? I I doubt it. Who did you say you ate with yesterday? Ivan, your entertainment mentor? Yeah, he produced Entourage and Band of Brothers. Um, I tried to get him on Dead Eyes, but uh, Mike Comate didn't respond to any of his emails. He's buddies with Tom Hanks. Not that it matters. <laughs> and what was the uh, what was the um, mood what slash the conversation what? like? We when- talked about our families because I know his kids. We talked about casting. We talked about my new pilot. <laughs> all right i found him how do you know this guy how old is he this is this fucking second degree here all right and i'm ready to turn into the first murder wise up <laughs> 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 did he have the peter luger credit card you know, it's, it's like cash or the credit card is the only way you can pay for food at Peter Luger's. All right. I don't know but, why. But their own credit card. Isn't I found out this is the worst. See, this, this is the is kind the of worst. shit you need to learn about New York. You need to have like cool little factoids about New York if you want to fit in as a New Yorker. I have factoids about, about Luger's. Peter Luger's. I know Luger's. Okay. Luger's was sold in 1950. You didn't know the most important. 1950 was sold for $35,000 because they were the only people who bidded. George is asking if he should leave, LOL. Because he's not saying anything. He can't hear us. Yeah. So he should probably leave. Yeah. Don't say LMAO. Type in. Type I in. said stay, LMAO. I'm dead. You can get a mic stand and then you could use both hands to type. Yeah. Instead I... of like holding the mic directly on your nose and breathing into it. Yeah. Johnny Carson said that Peter Luger's was the best meal he's ever had. 
So I <laughs> caution all of you to proceed with reverence. Having leftovers from Peter's is better than having the finest dining elsewhere because it's Luger. Have you guys ever... This is going to be a very specific set of circumstances. Have you guys ever been to Luger's after you were at Illusions? I've never actually been to Luger's. Then you're a loser. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I've been to Luger's. I don't know what Luger's is. Steak yeah. frites for lunch, basically, is what I was Are trying you, to Did say. you reheat it? It looks still cold from the fridge or something. I thought you had to freeze steaks. My teeth are cold. <laughs> and why are you using chopsticks? I let's talk about you, right? Okay. <laughs> are you gonna move anytime soon? No. You live in a piece of shit. <laughs> no, I don't. Pile, you ever been to his house? <laughs> yeah, it's really nice. I've stayed. There no, that's what I'm saying. It's really nice. I love it. No, you yeah. didn't. You said it was a piece of shit, and that I yeah. should move. I mean, now that I've been to Luger's, I can't help but feel like everything's a piece of shit unless you're at Le Peters. <laughs> so every Peter house that's not worst, a steakhouse. Yeah, has the worst ambiance of any restaurant I've ever been in. It's like bright lights, <laughs> waiters that are super rude to you. They oh, only yeah. have two things on the menu. It's like a whole <laughs> shtick. They have three things on the menu. Steak for two, steak for three, steak for four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So uh, it's like it's sort of like the Times Square of steakhouses. It seems it's kind of like a tourist trap a little bit. And you, uh, you said you had the best meal of your life there last night with your entertainment mentor. No, that was Johnny Carson who said that. <laughs> well, you said you loved it, didn't you? I thought it was. He great. said he had steak for the first time ever. <laughs> <what> he said. <laughs> <laughs> Thick cut bacon, sizzling wedge. <laughs> was Peter Luger the first choice? I didn't choose it. Oh, okay. He said, do you want to get dinner? I said, yes. Hmm. Well, this guy's a real mover and shaker. He's got quite a yeah. list of uh, accomplishments. Nice. I'm intrigued. I don't know how you know him. Cleveland. Let's talk about something else. <laughs> Cleveland. <laughs> Ten minutes of this one topic. I think we're done with it. We've exhausted it, and I'm exhausted of it. You keep you harping back it. to the state, not, man. Yeah. Thank you, Athletic Greens, for sponsoring this episode. No way. We're not in the middle of an ad break right now. <laughs> well, if I'm going to edit it, I might as well just throw caution to the wind, right? You guys are saying, oh, just piece it together. You know how long it takes? Probably not this that long, This week, apparently right? zero. You didn't plan anything. <laughs> all right. All right. A waxing episode. A waxing yeah. episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a real... That's, yeah. that's a kind of fun way to say you did nothing. Dance break! <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> That's not the song. That's not it either. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? <laughs> nope. This sucks. This is not the <laughs>
helping out the conversation, <laughs> helping move it. But to answer your question, Amir, uh, it was a front-facing fall, so I didn't really have. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Downstairs, front-facing. Mm-hmm. And the stairs were metallic too, so every it was uh, very loud as well. It's not great. <laughs> This is at a cheese restaurant. Yeah, the whole place kind of stopped and stared for what felt like a stunned eternity. Mm -hmm. It was pretty bad. Yeah, but at least Kyle wasn't there. Speaking of getting stares, uh, I recently went out to uh, like an orchestra concert. It was like a school or a university orchestra concert, and there were a lot of uh, older people there, uh, probably around their like sixties, seventies, eighties. And I walked in, sat down, uh, took off my mask just to breathe a little bit and talk to my friend. And someone tapped me and they said, excuse me, sir, can you put on your mask? And it was one of the audience, <laughs> one of the members of the audience. And I look behind me and everybody is staring at me. It was <laughs> insane. So they all have masks on but you? They all had masks on. It was, uh, it was crazy. <laughs> so, did you put it on <laughs> what did you do oh, yeah i absolutely put it on but i felt like the people behind me were like pod people really for believing in this shit <laughs> really. yeah. he yelled let's go brandon and ran away <laughs> yeah. big time you suck you suck big time uh, jeff that's really not nice yeah like i don't know why we we're starting to have fun. All of a sudden, you have to antagonize somebody. Yeah. Is that like what's your, the your whole what's thing? the vibe like at a cheese only restaurant? Does it sort of reek of cheese down there, or do they yes. sort of? Yeah, it stinks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's... Find the sound. Find the sound. There we go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. You're like, yeah, Marty Daisy Sandal Chain knows. sounds. The single note of let's get it started. <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah. it's amazing that be... that's even recognizable. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Uh, Marty said that he that used to be his spot to take like first dates to. <laughs> a cheese restaurant? The basement of a cheese store. <laughs> Reeks of Havarti. <laughs> Havarti Michael. <laughs> <laughs> when he's feeling extra cheesy, that's his nickname. Oh, man. <laughs> Barty Michael. <laughs> um, so you're down there. What are you guys getting? Like a fondue, a charcuterie? What's the did, cheese vibe? We ended up doing the Mongers Five, I think. What's that? Johnny? Uh, it's just a plate of five different cheeses that they pick <laughs> out. Like, it's not really that crazy. Right. I don't know why Jeff threw it to me to explain it. <laughs> <laughs> and they choose all the cheeses, or do they ask you what you like? No, they choose like a all goat of goat or a cow or okay. And you, yeah. and I'm glad you asked because you would have thought that we added some say. Instead, we're left with this fucking triple. Cr- <laughs> 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 Sorry, you deserve that, man. <laughs> Your apartment is now hitting you. <laughs> yeah. You get how you're annoying so much that objects. <laughs> Are starting to revolt. <laughs> um, you're bleeding a little bit. Not like my whole life just flashed before my eyes. Because <laughs> it was we, a ring light. They fucking um. They they seemingly gave us the dregs. We had this triple creme that was to die for, drizzled in honey. We had what was it? A truffle gouda. I I guess, man. I just ate the cheeses. Yeah. Kind of haphazardly just putting them in my mouth. There was a goat cheese. There was a wine and coffee rubbed. Strong cheese. And it just sort of felt like they didn't give a damn whether we had a good time or not. They really didn't bend to every will that I that we had. And um I didn't appreciate it. I didn't have a great time. Are you kidding me? Hmm? The waitress came up to us so many times asking how we were doing. That's true. They were pretty much bending to our every whim because mm. it was on the company credit card, which was nice. But that's true. I also sent a lot of things back after yeah. having eaten half of it. 
Yeah, and they still like did it with a smile on their face. I guess I missed some kind of etiquette class that everybody else took. Like, why? Why is that? I, I just myself all the time, and then I see glances like this, where everybody's staring me at the eyes, angry for some reason. Sorry, just got a package. I was trying to figure out what it was. Pile, how's the kid? Good, really good. Went to a doctor's appointments this week. He has. He's in the 25th percentile in height and weight and the 65th percentile in head size. Wow. Whoa. He's got the cranial capacity of a young Butch Cassidy, as they say. I mean, Big he's brain. I'm yeah. pretty into phrenology recently, and I really like yeah. the sound of that. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> sort of I'll learn a lot. Some, uh, I'll send some skull photos. Or... <laughs> yeah, yeah. please. Uh, it's all about the shape, really, of the the front and the back and how they interact yeah. with each other. I should yeah. note that I've, I'm in the first percentile in head size, actually. Mm. I, I wear a size four hat. Yeah, smallest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else what's is he the, doing? What's Walking the last thing that he learned? The last, last big thing. thing. He, the last big thing he learned. Mm, that's a good one. Object permanence still, or...? Yeah, no, he's he's good. He's stringing sentences together. He's like walking okay. around. He knows about you know his family. His family just came to visit, and I uh, like his grandparents and um, uh, aunt and uncle. And he had a really good time and was like looking forward to it. Like we told him they were coming, and he was like talking about it for like days leading up to it. It's like pretty crazy. He his like brain doesn't reset like a fish every night anymore. He's like nice. fully involved all the time. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think what the latest piece of information he has. He learns like so many words. I feel like every day he's got like five new words that he picks mm. up. Do you ever wonder like, whoa, how did he learn that word? I didn't teach it to him. Well, yesterday we were playing like farm bingo. Like we have these boards with like farm metals on them and you can do like bingo with it. And he was like just playing bingo by himself, like picking up things <laughs> and putting them on the map. And I'm like, how did you learn this? And he like couldn't explain it. So I don't actually know how he got that information. <laughs> But he had somehow figured that someone had taught him that clearly, but yeah, yeah, that's pretty awesome. He naturally yeah. figured it out. Yeah, yeah he's fun. He Does he know JavaScript? Or... Given any, he knows. What was that? Sorry, you go. Oh. Who? Whoever talked over me. I was just asking if he knew JavaScript, but no. But I am working on that. I'm okay. trying to figure out like how I can teach him engineering concepts we have like an engineering like a series of books about like physics for babies and it's very uh so mm, interesting there's like statistical analysis for babies <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. one of the books and it's about uh entropy it doesn't matter this is not that interesting. <laughs> well it's probably more interesting than the whole 10 minute spiel that we had about peter luger which is a restaurant localized within new york city <laughs> And is hard to afford, by the way, for most of the general public. But I guess Ivan has that cash, that deep, deep yeah. pocket, right? Given the choice of anyone in the world, whom would you want as a dinner guest? Let's start there and see where the podcast goes. Okay. Why are you annoyed that you <laughs> yeah. had to come up with a single question for an hour-long conversation? Conan O'Brien is my answer. Nice. Why? He's funny as shit. <laughs> tall too. <laughs> There's lots of funny tall people. Why Conan yeah. specifically? Gary Gullman is like six foot six. Hilarious yeah. stand-up comedian. Yeah, Probably he's taller funny. than Conan. He also lives in New York, so I could make that happen ASAP. Ferg. <laughs> what about you, Johnny? Uh, I don't know. Probably some musician. Maybe. Frank Ocean. Just be. That'll be interesting. Get into the mind of Frank. I don't have any... I can't make this funny. This is like just a very general question. Amir? Choose an athlete. I'd like to sort of pick the brains of LeBron James. <laughs> uh, LeBron, nice. brains. Uh, <laughs> LeBron brains. LeBron brains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It'd be cool to... Jeffrey sort of James. To <laughs> Stop. Amir? Yeah. Uh, sort of get to the bottom of his spirits business. It seems mm. like there's a lot of money to be had there in terms of pivoting. Because uh -huh. The Rock did the tequila thing, and then yeah. LeBron did it. Also mm. tequila. 
I wonder if it's all just yeah. from the same place with a different label on it. That is interesting because yeah. uh, Brian Cranston and uh, Aaron Paul of Breaking Bad fame, uh, they also have, a, I think, a tequila as well. I think it's just tequila is like how you Super get it. Super cheap. And, and, yeah. I think it's all, mar- it's like the best mar- marketing markup you can do is like to just get alcohol and then like put it in a nice bottle with a nice label. Mm-hmm. Jeffrey James. And you already have like, you know, between The Rock and LeBron, two of the yeah. biggest spokespeople in the world. So like, why would they get paid to hawk some other product? They might as well own the entire distribution. Mm-hmm. Um, Is that the kind of liquor that you'd like? Uh, let's say that you had your own liquor. Pile yeah, I don't really like tequila. With. I wonder why they both chose that one. I wonder if that's specifically Pile, cheaper. Who to- would you want to have dinner with? <laughs> Ivan E. Schwartz. <laughs> known for Earth 2 and let's see what else and taking Jeffrey to Peter Luger are you kidding me? Yeah. And Peter Lug- having an account at Peter Luger probably having the Peter Luger credit card is what I think he's best known for Nice. just kidding he's, he's super well known for other stuff what's the APY on a Peter Luger credit card <laughs> yeah, I don't know <laughs> It's funny. <laughs> it is like, funny. Yeah. Just a callback. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, things can just I'd be say, funny. You don't have to say it. Yeah. Either. I guess I would say Steve Jobs. Mm. Even though I think that's kind of like... Yeah, he's dead. I don't know, basic or whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he has to be alive. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't do the dead or alive thing. <sighs> yeah. Well, now I have to start over. Give me a fucking meal with Putin right now. I want to sit down and stare the man in the Put eyes. Put me so in you a can room ex- with Putin. <laughs> he can He'll fold. to me. I will what set this he- straight. <laughs> I feel like I can convince him. Jeff is me calling. Putin at Luger's. <laughs> you think Putin is stressed out right now? Like, is he like nervous? Is he? You think he's sleeping well? I wonder. I don't know. Because he's sort of a sociopath, so like he doesn't seem to mind the casualty that he's caused. But at the same time, it must weigh on him a little bit, you would think. Yeah. Name three things you have in common. With what? Well, these are the fucking questions from the New York Times 36 questions that lead to love thing. And it's supposed to be you and your partner, but it doesn't make any sense because it's just you guys individually. So what do you have in common? Amongst all of us in the room? That's maybe a little easier to understand, sure. We all no, think the Putin is a monster. <laughs> yeah, let's get back on the Putin topic. <laughs> An absolute monster, a dictator. Mm-hmm. We all work at HeadGum, so that's yeah. two. Uh, we have to endure this, and that's three. Okay. <laughs> when you, the no, energy nothing. you had, the energy <laughs> Jeff had at the top with his fucking chopsticks, he was on top of the fucking world. I think Jeff has said less this episode than any other episode. <laughs> George he looks said, despondent. He's talked about maybe two things, and he said yeah. like maybe four sentences. <laughs> You know, this is a waxing up. (laughs) Take four minutes and tell your life story in as much detail as possible. Let's start with Andrew fucking Pyle. I'm not. Do we have to take? Do we have to take a break? By the way, don't we have ads? Wait, what time is it? (laughs) It is three oh four. Oh shit! Yeah, we'll be right back. Fuck! 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 fuck, fuck. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Guys, relationships take work. Right, And a lot of us will drop anything to go help someone we care about. We'll go out of our way to treat other people well. But how often do we give ourselves the same treatment? I go to therapy every week. It helps me with all of my relationships. You know, from the very personal to the very surface level. Just showing up in ways that obviously serve other people and myself. And this month, BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to take care of your most important relationship. The one you have with yourself, whether it's hitting the gym, making time for a haircut, or even trying therapy. You are your greatest asset, so invest the time and effort into yourself like you do for other people. 
BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. Plus, it's much more affordable than traditional in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp. This podcast is, again, sponsored by BetterHelp, and the HeadGum Podcast listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash what's that? That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash what's that? Thanks, BetterHelp. Thank you to Raycon for sponsoring this episode of our show. Guys, a lot of people didn't make resolutions this year. You know what? I get it. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't still find a way to shake things up, whether it's by switching up your workout routine or going someplace new. And whatever you, way you challenge yourself this new year, there's no better way to do it than with a pair of Raycon wireless earbuds in your ears. Raycon wireless earbuds are the best way to bring audio with you because no matter how much you shake things up, literally, no matter how much you shake, you know they won't fall out of your ears. Their everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. There's also awareness mode for when you need to listen to your surroundings so that you can take Raycon wherever you go. With optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit, these earbuds are so comfortable and they will not budge. Trust me, I've started running for seemingly no reason. I use my Raycons and they don't fall. The sound quality is as good, if not better, than other leading brands. I, they're the only earbuds that I use uh, in-ear-wise. And they offer eight hours of playtime plus a 32-hour battery life. And they're priced just right. You get quality audio at half the price of competing audio brands. It's no wonder why Raycon's everyday earbuds have over 48,000 five-star reviews online. So right now, the HeadGum Podcast listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash what's that? That's buyraycon.com slash what's that to get 15% on Raycons. Again, that's buyraycon.com slash what's that? Thanks, Raycon. Und wir back. Four minutes on the board. <laughs> All right, pilots, let's hear that fucking life story. Let's include real people's names. Uh, I don't, you don't have to why? do that. This, this is not, no, I don't want to tell that story. I'm not prepared to do that emotionally. Yeah. It's bad podcasting. Yeah, man. Yeah. No, no heads up. You're going to come in and tell your life story. I think that's easy, but yeah. Why don't you? Because yeah, you haven't done story. anything. You're nothing. You want, you want well, my life your, story? No, I don't actually. No one does. <laughs> it goes from a fucking yo-yo competition to a, a dinner at Peter Luger's. That's it. <laughs> All right, how about this, fuckers? And now I'm angry. What do you value most in a friendship? <laughs> You're angry at that question. <laughs> I'm. I don't know what to do here. All right, I'm between a rock and a fucking hard place because you guys are spewing poison at me and George isn't even offering anything. Your one bit for this episode was to add George who's can't hear or say anything. Mm -hmm. Then you <laughs> plan no bits beyond that. So there's no talking or anything like that. All right. And you get ups and look at your look at your body language. It's so manic and nervous <laughs> right now. You're rocking. Yeah. Why do you think I'd edit five people? More perspectives. <laughs> so, Amir, before you joined, Johnny signed on, and Jeff was, like, really excited that Johnny was here. And he was like, it's, I'm really glad you're here. Like, you'll see why. And I assumed it was because he had some Johnny-specific bit planned. And now I realize it's because he had nothing planned. Mm -hmm. And he just needed more people to be able to carry the show for him. <laughs> Also, didn't Johnny say he might not be able to come? You were yeah. not. Yeah, I wasn't free, and I, I shouldn't be here right Johnny now. moved heaven and earth to be here, and yes, this is what we have. I have let's make the most out of it. I have 6% left on my laptop, so you I'm going to drop be out. Me. <laughs> I'm definitely leaving. This is it. This is the worst episode we've ever done. Right? It, it yeah. feels that way, yeah. Yeah, it certainly does. And I'm my, sorry, you know, I'm going to show a nude photo. How about that? Everybody loves talks about my ass all the time, right? Here we a go. New photo, no dude. way. New I photo kinda, of my own ass. Kind of don't want to look, but I feel like I have to look. What am I looking That's at you? there? <laughs> it's me stretching. <laughs> that looked like a a dog. Wait, yeah, go back to that. At first. <laughs> God, you have such small cheeks. <laughs> You somehow you have, you somehow have a huge ass, but really a really small. Gym. He pads his pants. He pads his butt cheeks. You have white hips and a really small hole in cheeks. I don't know what that was. 
It was one of those optical illusions where it's like a yeah. picture of what people with a stroke see. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Let's talk. Um, I, I don't know. There's nothing new in my life. What about Who super took fun penis fun? candy? You, you- Wait, you wait, literally go just back. came from a. You just came from an audition. I mean, what was the what was the role? What was glad what was, you do some asked. Lines. So it was actually oh, do some lines. <laughs> there was a lot of improv involved, and one of them was mm. uh, my name's Johnny Villa. <laughs> no way. <laughs> they didn't Why like that they... line, but I got two takes. Okay, so what was the commercial for? Why Thank would my name for... possibly be mentioned in a commercial? Because Craig Robinson is also in it, and he loves your ass. No way. He has no idea who I am. <laughs> the audition was good. It was virtual, uh, and it was virtually useless. Um, how many kind of auditions have you had? Well, yeah. Was, how, what was the product, and how many auditions have you had for a commercial? For this one, or for commercials in general? Ever. Ever, probably over forty. Booked any of them? Only because of Vinny Pione. <laughs> <laughs> so off an audition, no. <laughs> <laughs> so 0 for 40 so far I almost was uh, in an Enterprise commercial with Kristen Bell and ask me why I lost out on it why'd you lose out on it because I shaved my mustache I didn't know that mattered oh. nobody fucking told me <laughs> uh, they, I walk in for the final callback or for the, chemi- the read or something and they were like What'd you, what happened to the mustache and I was like oh I had to shave it for a different audition and they said oh thanks for coming in <laughs> they didn't even do the t- <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> they don't know you can like put on fake mustaches that they have like makeup departments new york fuck right? you fuck you <laughs> <laughs> that well, was he the finally line. found it he finally found it <laughs> that was the line um Sorry, I got lost picturing myself living in Pyle's back house. <laughs> you uh, know, I invited yeah. you up here when you're upstate and you never even told me we were coming. You have a kid. Yeah, what sorry. am I going to do with a kid? The kid has daycare. Just come He goes to bed at like seven. Really? <laughs> yeah. All right. What is daycare uh, like up there? What is daycare like up there? Uh, it's just a lady's house. So mm-hmm. this woman watches like three other little kids his age. Oh, George is laughing. Shut up. George is laughing. That's kind of fun to see. He He doesn't have to shut up. All right. All right. So the daycare's at this lady's house. I snotted. I laughed so much that boogers came out of my nose. We can see that. If you can rewind it, you can see that happen. Let's get that on the tape. Yeah. In real time. Yeah. Jeffrey, you don't have to be texting in the middle of your show. Sorry, Sorry. your show. Remember, your show. It's hard. What's the greatest accomplishment of your guys' lives? Johnny? Lasting this far uh, (laughs) on my uh, laptop battery right now. It's uh, on 2%, so very soon you're just going to see me, wow. and then I'm just not going to be there. It's going to be no insane. Charger, no charger to be found? He's No ghost. charger to be found. I forgot I forgot the charger at the apartment, uh, and it was Friday anyway, so I was like, uh, I'll just get my work done early before, uh, before the battery dies anyway. He's ghost. <laughs> you said that already, and it wasn't funny the first time, so it's not going to be funny this time. I know. <laughs> <laughs> let's see your ass again, man. Yeah, let's do that again. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> it wasn't funny. It was kind of hot. Not uh, really. Yeah. 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 It looked like, it looked like two, the, uh, two chicken the, drumettes. Mm-hmm. What <laughs> is Zoom. that? Is that, the, is that the same picture? It looks totally different. I zoomed in. It's me stretching. <laughs> Oh my God. Jesus Christ. What shape is that? <laughs> <laughs> Why? 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 Nancy Gerrigan style. Uh, Nancy I mean, Gerrigan style. 
<laughs> you can just keep that in the in the YouTube feed because it's like totally indiscernible what is going on. There. Yeah, it's it's self censorship. <laughs> My greatest achievement is my turn on Lonely and Horny Season 2. <laughs> oh my god, that's <laughs> pathetic. It was so <laughs> there. <laughs> George said this thing is still happening. This yeah. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we uh we went to the um the new office and uh we Wondery is right below us in the new office in Manhattan and uh Goop used to be in that office, so I was in Gwyneth it's Paltrow's not, office. It's not Wondery. It's Wonder. Wonder Media Network. It's different than Wondery. It's not even Wondery? How did they get the corner office? Ours is a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Explain to me how a baby has better style than my ass. Whose child is that? Yeah, who's... Whatever. Yeah, we lost Johnny. Oh, we lost Johnny. All right, now it's time to step up. Whose child was that? The founder of Co Canyon Coffee. Happy now? And what That's was he stylish? Yeah. He was in a green sweater with painter's pants and fucking Birkenstocks. I think that's awesome. I think that's awesome. Actually. Sweet. Stay on, because you said sweet like you're about to leave. <laughs> I wasn't about to leave, but you're incredibly insecure that you think that. Amir, make three true we statements. For instance, we are in this feeling, or in this room both feeling blank. Oh... <laughs> uh, we are in this room feeling disappointed. Joy. Oh. Uh, joy. We are. That's what I thought you were going to say. We are in this room wondering how you got How the I ball. did this so well this week. No. Because as we round third and head home, I'm starting to think that people are going to love this episode. We I'm getting confident. <laughs> Last one. We are ready for the weekend. But we don't want it to come too soon because of how much fun we're having right now during work. Andrew? Uh, yeah, we are wondering how much time is how much time is left episode. because we're worried that it's going to end too soon. Uh -huh. We can go for an hour. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I dare you to go for an hour. <laughs> now I feel like we have to go for an hour. Don't have to. I better fucking book this commercial because I'm tired of feeling like I'm three steps behind everybody else. Right? There's no way. There's no <laughs> way you're going to. With yeah. the Enterprise commercial, did you ever see it on TV and was the person, did the person have a mustache? I saw it. The guy, I don't even think had a mustache. I think it was a woman. <sighs> a woman playing opposite Kristen, Kristen yeah. Bell. Mm -hmm. Is it Kristen or Kirsten? Uh, Kristen. I think it's Kristen with a K, though. Correct. She's one of the most uh, famous people on the face of the earth, so it's not one of those things that we're like, oh, it's fine that I don't know this by heart. Whatever. I watched all of The Good Place. I love her. She's great. I she's great. I don't know her name super well. I love her. I think she's great. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, I just looked at his Kirsten, so Jeffrey, you were wrong. <laughs> We three in this room are feeling poison. <laughs> it's like one of the main reasons people go into comedy is because they're actually not doing too well in their personal life. You know? And then it's like you can work through those emotions with comedy, but this is like my main, my main thing comedy wise right now. And I like, I show up, I try to be prepared every week. Obviously, I'll drop the ball sometimes. And you guys could have taken it in a different direction. You know, you could have brought something to the table. You could have been 
Like, hey, it's all right, you know? It's all right, you didn't bring anything. But instead, it was, uh, it was a 45-minute lambast. It was a spit roast. It was a... Uh, it was a spam bake. Do you guys know clam bakes? So this is like Masubi. You can't hear me? No, I'm talking to George. I've tuned you out. I think George is having trail mix. <laughs> oh, he's uh Oh, he's still muted. Can you hear us now? Got it. He can't. This might be the last episode of the show ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, plugs. <laughs> what are you guys talking about? <laughs> we were, uh, we were talking about how this might be the last episode of the show ever. You say that every time. This one was bad. <laughs> Should end right there. <laughs> was a HeadGum original.